This video will discuss work during reversible expansion and compressions of an ideal gas. Okay, so work in one of our previous videos was defined as being equal to the negative integral from the initial volume of our system to the final volume of our system of the external pressure as a function of volume integrated with respect to volume. So what we've got here to demonstrate that is some gas cylinder in green. There's a piston or a physical barrier which prevents the gas from escaping from our system here, which is the inside of that cylinder. It's a closed system, so the gas molecules on the inside cannot be exchanged with the surroundings, which is everything outside the cylinder. But we can exchange energy throughout the outside. So the energy that we're interested in here is the work that we can do by changing the volume of our system. So let's say there's some gas on the outside of this cylinder and it has some external pressure. Maybe that's a function of whatever our volume is, maybe it's not. So whenever our volume increases, our final height is greater than our initial height. That is an expansion event. The change in volume is greater than zero. Thus, the and the pressure is always a positive number. So the work that we do is negative. The system does work on the surroundings. Thus, the energy of the system goes down. If we start at a larger volume and go to a smaller one, our change in volume is negative, And thus, this integral becomes a uh, negative times negative is a positive. So the work that we do during compression is positive because the system, sorry, the surroundings does work on the system, and thus that energy goes into the system. Okay, so in order to expand our gas, we need the external pressure to be less than or equal to the pressure of our gas because if the pressure wasn't less than or equal to our gas here, then we'd have no way of getting that gas to push against that pressure and do work. Conversely, to compress the gas, we need our external pressure to be greater than or equal to the pressure of the gas, because if it's not, then there's no imbalance in forces that we can have for the gas to move that piston and compress our gas to a smaller volume. All right, so what this results in is the following inequality. So because of these relationships of what our external pressure is and our external pressure being what's, uh, what's included here for our work integral, the work that we do during compression, the magnitude of it, because it's gonna switch signs obviously between expansion and compression, but the magnitude of the work that we do for compression, that's going to be greater than or equal to the amount of work that we do for expansion. But there's some happy medium in the middle here. So notice that each of these is a, we have a less than or equal to and a greater than or equal to. So what happens when the external pressure is always equal to the pressure of the gas? In that case, we can replace P external with the P of the gas in our integral. And this integral from our uh, small volume to the large volume, let's say, the, the, in, the pressure of the gas is always equal to the external pressure. So whether we're expanding or compressing, the work that we do is always the same. So the amount of work we do when we expand from VI to VF or VS to VL as I have here is the same as the negative amount of work we do during the reverse process. So this is called reversible work because this is the work that you do where it's the same whether you're expanding or compressing you can reverse the direction of of the work and your system doesn't have any less energy in it. Okay, so whenever the external pressure, as I mentioned, equals the gas pressure for all volumes, you get the minimum compression work and you get the maximum expansion work. So this is reversible when the magnitude of our expansion work equals the magnitude of our compression work. So thus the reversible process is a process whose direction can be reversed by some infinitesimal or some very small changes. So the work that we do when we go from here to here is equal to the negative work that we do from there to there if the process is reversible. All right, so what is this for an ideal gas? So the external pressure equals the pressure of the gas which if it is ideal is nRT over V. PV equals nRT, so P equals nRT over V, number of moles times gas constant times temperature over volume. 
So then the reversible work is the integral from the initial volume to the final volume of nRT over V dV. Uh, nRT are constants with respect to volume, so we can pull those out, minus nRT pulled that out. So then we have the integral of dV over V, which the integral of 1 over x is natural log of x. So we get, evaluating those at both ranges, we get the natural log of V final minus the natural log of V initial. And the natural log of A minus the natural log of B is the natural log of A over B. So this results in the reversible work for an ideal gas is equal to negative nRT times the natural log of the final volume divided by the initial volume.